Hi there, my name is Will and I'm a developer advocate at Kestra. Today I'm going to be walking you through the new features in the editor that we've introduced in Kestra 0.17. Let's take a look. Jumping into Kestra, I've got a simple flow here that's going to execute some Python code in a separate file. Now, previously you would have had to go to the separate editor page to write your Python code and then jump back into the flow editor. Introduced in 0.17, these are now combined so you never have to leave your flow. So if I press save here, I will now get this option to show namespace files, which will show me all the files inside of the example namespace. When I click that, I get given these options where I can see an option to search for files, I can create new files, create a folder, as well as import files and folders, as well as export all of them if I want to be able to take them out of Kestra and put them somewhere else. So super convenient that this is all in one place now, making editing your flows even easier. For this example, we can create our example.py file and simply type it in here. Once we've done so, we can press create and it will then jump into our Python file so we can easily switch between the Python file and our flow without ever having to leave the flow editor. As we can see, we also need a requirements.txt file so we can do the same thing and create that as well. For this example, we're gonna make a simple HTTP request. So we're gonna need the requests library as well as the Kestra library. So let's put those in. And once we've done so, we can save the file like so. Jumping into our Python code, we can start writing our request in here. Now the best bit is this still has all the auto completion and support that you would expect from a code editor. So it makes it really easy to write your code. Now that we've written our code, we can save this and we can execute our flow. As we're able to see, the flow is able to execute and it's able to read our files where it is able to access the output, which is this JSON from an API. I can also head over to output and see that it has successfully collected the data as we would expect. Jumping into our next example, we've got a Node.js script here that is going to require a JS file that we don't currently have. So what we can do is we can import that from our local system to get it straight into Kestra. All I have to do is head over to the show namespace files button and then press import file. And then I can select my JS file and it will appear here really quickly inside of Kestra. I can see it's gonna make a request to Docker Hub to get the number of downloads. As you can also see, because this flow is in the same namespace, we can see our Python file as as well as the requirements.txt. Because this is getting a little bit messy, let's create a couple of folders to make this easier to use. To do so, I can press the create folder button and I can simply type in the name of our folder. I'm gonna name it Python. Now I've done that, I can simply just drag the files into the folder and they move just like that and I can expand it to see them and hide it to make navigation a little bit easier. I can do the same with the JavaScript one by pressing create folder, typing JS, and then I can drag that in as well. But this will now not execute because I have now moved the location of the file, but I can right click on the file and get copy path and I can now paste it into my flow so that I don't have to figure out exactly what the path is. So now when I save my flow and press execute, I'll be able to see very clearly that it works. As well as importing files, I can also import folders. I've got an example folder with some extra Python code. So let's import that in and we can then put it into our Python folder. If I head over to the import folder, I can then select examples, which has all of our example code in it. It will ask me if I want to upload. As we can see here, it has added all of our files and folders. Now I have a file that's called hidden.py. Let me see if I can find it by using the filter. So here I can simply just type hidden and as you can see, it's given me the full path and I can click that and it's gonna open it in the editor. So if you're working with really large code bases with lots of files, then the filter makes it much easier to navigate between files. Now to make it a little bit easier, I can easily resize this to make it a little bit wider, especially as we're working with more and more files. Now I can now drag my examples file folder into the Python one and I can see it all there in one place. Now that we've done this, we can export everything so we can store it somewhere else by pressing the export namespace files button. And when I export this, it's gonna add it to my downloads folder so I can access it later. This will also include all of the flows that were in this namespace as well inside of an underscore flows directory. So if you wanna be able to access your flows and all the files to go with them, you can do that very easily here. Well, hopefully that gives you a really good overview of the new features in the brand new editor introduced in Kestra 0.17. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below and join our Slack where you can discuss with us further and let us know what you think of the new editor.